When most people hear North Pole, they think of Santa Claus. And while he'll always be at the very top of the world... There's also a magnetic pole, which is produced by um, fluctuations or flow of, of iron in the core of the Earth. Dr. Chris Conner of USF explains that the constantly moving molten iron acts like a giant car alternator, creating a magnetism on a planetary scale with a magnetic north and south pole. But over the last few decades, it's been moving, and now it's moved all the way from northern Canada into northern Siberia. Which means what your compass shows as north in Tampa Bay isn't really north. And this is a problem for airports. When a pilot navigates, he needs to find which is the correct runway to land in or take off on. So he uses his compass and his cockpit to orient himself. That'll tell, tell him that he's on the correct runway. Robert Burr of TIA says runway 36 originally pointed due north to 360 degrees. Or it did before the magnetic shift. Now it points just right at 10 degrees north, even though physically it hasn't moved. While the runway in question will always point to the true geographic North Pole, because the magnetic North Pole has now shifted, pilots who use compasses lining up on the runway may think they're in the wrong spot, unless this problem is corrected. So TIA has resolved to paint new numbers to match the pilot compass readings. Now runway 36 is runway 1. But this may only be a temporary fix. Several times per million years, Earth's magnetic pole does a full flip. At first, it becomes disorganized, with new poles popping up in odd places like the equator, bringing the green and red northern lights to the skies of Florida. The last shift was over 700,000 years ago, leaving some to say we're due. Some people have speculated that there's a shift beginning. Which may explain this recent fluctuation. But because our lifetimes are a blink of an eye in the geological time scale, it's too soon to tell. to some downright frightening news about climate change in tonight's Green Report. NASA scientists were left stunned after analyzing data showing that Greenland's ice sheet is melting at an unprecedented rate. Three independent satellites confirmed that over four days, the amount of ice melting in Greenland jumped from 40 to 97 percent, showed by this chart. The image on the left is from July 8th, the image on the right from July 12th. As one NASA scientist wrote in a press release, this was so extraordinary that at first I questioned the result. Was this real or was it due to a data error? Unfortunately, it's very much real. And in 30 years of observations, never has this much ice melted away from Greenland so fast. Of course, oil industry funded scientists will tell you, everything's just fine, it's just a really hot summer. Meanwhile, they're the ones most likely looking for mountaintop real estate away from the soon to be rising oceans. We're not even a full fourth of the way into 2012, and national weather records have already been fried on the sidewalk. Calculations from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration determined that March temperatures for the lower 48 states were a whopping 8.6 degrees above normal. Additionally, the first quarter of 2012 broke the January-March record by 1.4 degrees. To put the numbers in perspective, records are usually broken by only one or two-tenths of a degree. Quote, when you look at what's happened in March this year, it's beyond unbelievable, said University of Victoria climate scientist Andrew Weaver. Top NASA climate scientist James Hansen agreed, noting that heat extremes aren't just increasing in temperature, but in frequency as well. What does the record-breaking heat mean? To many, it's further proof of a drastically changing climate, and perhaps a reminder to buy an industrial-strength fan for the summer months. South shore of Oahu is being invaded by something strange from sea that even has sand crabs running for cover. First time I've seen this, I've never seen it before. It's really weird. It's, um, it almost looks like you want to eat it, like a little berry. It's probably millions, I'd say. If you look closely, the entire shoreline is dotted with tiny purple creatures all curled up. Looks like it has about six legs on each side. Yeah, it's like an avatar crab. Something strange comes up like this. You don't know what to expect. Eh? Maybe it's tsunami stuff. <laughs> It's something many have never seen before, and no one we found knew. Magnetic polar shifts causing massive global superstorms. Terence Aim. 
SalemNews.com. Superstorms can also cause certain societies, cultures or whole countries to collapse. Others may go to war with each other. NASA has been warning about it. Scientific papers have been written about it. Geologists have seen its traces in rock strata and ice core samples. Now it is here. An unstoppable magnetic pole shift that has sped up and is causing life-threatening havoc with the world's weather. Forget about global warming. Man-made or natural. What drives planetary weather patterns is the climate and what drives the climate is the sun's magnetosphere and its electromagnetic interaction with the planet's own magnetic field. When the field shifts, when it fluctuates, when it goes into flux and begins to become unstable anything can happen. And what normally happens is that all hell breaks loose. Magnetic polar shifts have occurred many times in Earth's history. It's happening again now to every planet in the solar system including Earth. The magnetic field drives weather to a significant degree and when that field starts migrating superstorms start erupting. The superstorms have arrived. The first evidence we have that the dangerous superstorm cycle has started is the devastating series of storms that pounded the UK during late 2010. On the heels of the lashing the British Isles sustained, monster storms began to lash North America. The latest superstorm as of this writing is a monster over the US that stretched across 2,000 miles affecting more than 150 million people. Yet even as that storm wreaked havoc across the western, southern, midwestern and northeastern states, another superstorm broke out in the Pacific and closed in on Australia. The southern continent had already dealt with the disaster of historic superstorm flooding from rains that dropped as much as several feet in a matter of hours. Tens of thousands of homes were damaged or destroyed. After the deluge tiger sharks were spotted swimming between houses in what was once a quiet suburban neighborhood. Shocked authorities now numbly concede that much of the water may never dissipate and have wearily resigned themselves to the possibility that region will now contain a new inland sea. But then only a handful of weeks later another superstorm the mega monster cyclone Yassi struck northeastern Australia. The damage it left in its wake is being called by rescue workers a war zone. The incredible superstorm packed winds near 190 miles per hour. Although labeled as a Category 5 cyclone, it was theoretically a Category 6. The reason for that is storms with winds of 155 miles per hour are considered Category 5, yet Yassi was almost 22% stronger than that. A cat's cradle. Yet Yassi may only be a foretaste of future superstorms. Some climate researchers, monitoring the rapidly shifting magnetic field, are predicting superstorms in the future with winds as high as 300 to 400 miles per hour. Such storms would totally destroy anything they came into contact with on land. The possibility more storms like Yase or worse will wreak havoc on our civilization and resources is found in the complicated electromagnetic relationship between the Sun and Earth. The synergistic tug of war has been compared by some to an intricately constructed cat's cradle. And it's in a constant state of flux. The Sun's dynamic ever-changing electric magnetosphere interfaces with the Earth's own magnetic field affecting, to a degree, the Earth's rotation, processional wobble, dynamics of the planet's core, its ocean currents, and above all else the weather, cracks in Earth's magnetic shield. The Earth's northern magnetic pole is moving towards Russia at a rate of about 5 miles annually. The progression to the east had been happening for decades. Suddenly, in the past decade the rate sped up. Now the magnetic pole is shifting east at a rate of 40 miles annually, an increase of 800%. And it continues to accelerate. Recently, as the magnetic field fluctuates, NASA has discovered cracks in it. This is worrisome as it significantly affects the ionosphere, troposphere wind patterns, and atmospheric moisture. All three things have an effect on the weather. Worse. What shields the planet from cancer-causing radiation is the magnetic field. It acts as a shield deflecting harmful ultraviolet, X-rays and other life-threatening radiation from bathing the surface of the Earth. With the field weakening and cracks emerging, the death rate from cancer could skyrocket and mutations of DNA can become rampant. Another federal agency, NOAA, issued a report caused a flurry of panic when they predicted that mammoth superstorms in the future could wipe out most of California. The NOAA scientists said it's a plausible scenario and would be driven by an atmospheric river, moving water at the same rate as 50 Mississippi rivers flowing into the Gulf of Mexico. Magnetic field may dip, flip and disappear. 
The Economist wrote a detailed article about the magnetic field and what's happening to it. In the article they noted, There is, however, a growing body of evidence that the Earth's magnetic field is about to disappear, at least for a while. The geological record shows that it flips from time to time, with the South Pole becoming the North, and vice versa. On average, such reversals take place every 500,000 years, but there is no discernible pattern. Flips have happened as close together as 50,000 years, though the last one was 780,000 years ago. But, as discussed at the Greenland Space Science Symposium, held in Kangelasik this week, the signs are that another flip is coming soon. Discussing the magnetic polar shift and the impact on weather, the scholarly paper, Weather and the Earth's Magnetic Field, was published in the journal Nature. Scientists are very concerned about the increasing danger of superstorms and the impact on humanity. Superstorms will not only damage agriculture across the planet leading to famines and mass starvation, they will also change coastlines, destroy cities and create tens of millions of homeless. Superstorms can also cause certain societies, cultures or whole countries to collapse. Others may go to war with each other. A Danish study published in the scientific journal Geology, found strong correlation between climate change, weather patterns and the magnetic field. The Earth's climate has been significantly affected by the planet's magnetic field, according to a Danish study published Monday that could challenge the notion that human emissions are responsible for global warming. Our results show a strong correlation between the strength of the Earth's magnetic field and the amount of precipitation in the tropics, one of the two Danish geophysicists behind the study, Mads Fallas Chow Knudsen of the Geology Department at Aarhus University in Western Denmark, told the Videnskap Journal. He and his colleague Peter Riesager, of the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, Jealous, compared a reconstruction of the prehistoric magnetic field 5,000 years ago based on data drawn from stalagmites and stalactites found in China and Oman. In the scientific paper, Mid-A magnetopause shifts earthward of geosynchronous orbit during geomagnetic superstorms with DST equals minus 300 nt. The magnetic intensity of solar storms impacting Earth can intensify the effects of the polar shift and also speed up the frequency of the emerging superstorms. Pole reversal may also be initiating new ice age. According to some geologists and scientists, we have left the last interglacial period behind us. Those periods are lengths of time about 11,500 years between major ice ages. One of the most stunning signs of the approaching ice age is what's happened to the world's precessional wobble. The Earth's wobble has stopped as explained in the geology and space science website earthschangesmedia.com. The Chandler wobble was first discovered back in 1891 by Seth Carlo Chandler, an American astronomer. The effect causes the Earth's poles to move in an irregular circle of 3 to 15 meters in diameter in an oscillation. The Earth's wobble has a 7-hyphen year cycle which produces two extremes, a small spiraling wobble circle and a large spiraling wobble circle, about 3.5 years apart. For the conclusion of this article, visit helium.com. Terence Aim is a Salem News.com contributor based in Chicago, who is well known nationally for his stirring reports on the top-ranked site. Helium.com. Born in Minnesota, Terence Aim grew up in the Chicagoland suburbs. Having traveled to 40 of the 50 states and lived in seven of them, Aim is no stranger to travel. He's also spent time in Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean, Europe, Asia and Western Africa. An executive for many years with Wall Street broker-dealer firms, Aim has also had a lifelong interest in science, technology, the arts, philosophy and history. If it's still possible to be a Renaissance man in the 21st century, AIM is working hard to be one. AIM has several book projects in the works. Media sites that have recently featured AIM and or discussed his articles include ABC News, Time Magazine, Business Insider, CrunchGear.com, Discover, Advice, Benzing and more recently, his work has been showing up in South Africa and Russia.